Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC Paris, and it is a damn good DFS card uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, there is some kind of obvious upside. There's also some kind of hidden upside, hidden upside, and also it's a 14 fight card, at least with one day to post time, which means that you know you don't have to do all kinds of crazy, stupid stuff to be in contention for, you know, the big prize in the big GPP. We're going to do the lineup construction piece uh, either later today or early tomorrow morning. Now, I know that it's a it's an early start, but unfortunately, you know, personal variance has delayed the uh, the video schedule for this week. But it's a, it's a really, really good card. A uh, lot of instructive DFS points and uh, I think what I want to do first is talk about the um, the Victor Altamirano Daniel Barres fight because this is the fight that has the most kind of obvious line value. You have Barres who's eighty four hundred and Victor Altamirano who's seventy eight hundred. So normally that would reflect you know Barres being like a minus one forty favorite, um, but uh, you have Altamirano as actually a minus 130 favorite himself. So there's an incredible amount of line value in Alta Murano. So if you were playing, um, you know, cash or low risk contest or anything like that, this is typically the type of guy you'd want to start your lineup with just because the math really, really works in his favor. Now, when it comes to GPPs, you have to look at the, you know, the upside a little bit more. And when you look at the, you know, the metrics, it comes in kind of two forms here. Number one, you have his inside the distance line, which is extremely poor, you know, plus 500 inside the distance. I would never play anybody with a plus 500 inside the distance. But what's kind of the, the undecided issue here is whether this last performance is kind of real. In other words, he had nine takedowns in his last fight. Um, and... Needless to say, if he's going to get nine takedowns um, in a fight where he's 7,800, uh, you're going to want him. Now, the thing to note is that DeSantos kind of got up right away, and that kind of, you know, that, that cuts two ways. Number one is it's bad that he can't keep his you know, opponent down, but on the other hand, it does rack up that chain wrestling kind of string. But the way I'm looking at this, I mean, I don't know. Is it really, is he really a wrestler though? You know, I, here he went, he got one takedown, I guess a minute control time. Lacera, this was kind of a shit show fight. Uh, Salvador, he did get three takedowns, five minutes of control time. The Elliott fight, I mean, he's never going to out-wrestle Tim Elliott. So I don't know what that was all about. Well, I know what it's all about. He wasn't going to get takedowns. And this DeSantos fight, for all of his nine takedowns, he actually lost. So... I don't know if that's what he's going to end up looking to do because the last time he did go for all those takedowns, it ended up in a loss. Um, so it's it's a really, really tricky spot as far as GPPs go. Now, we're going to look at ownership when we talk about you know lineup construction tomorrow, probably. But if the optimizers get to him a little bit too aggressively because of his line value... You know, Daniel Barres himself could be a pretty, you would think would be a pretty decent, you know, GPP play, you know, because, you know, that, that's typically what you look for is, is, is the opponent of kind of the obvious optimizer play. But you, you really want a guy like this to at least have some metrics working in his favor. And when I first looked at the card, I thought that he would, because um, from what I heard from content, he's very aggressive early and things like that. But when you actually look at the inside, the distance line is actually really poor. I mean, it's plus, even with the VIG, like plus 240. And that's really not very good at all. And, and considering that he doesn't go for takedowns either, I mean, th this is a rough spot. I, I, I almost want to say this fight is kind of a fade. And it's kind of strange, right? Because usually when you have this, you know, this big line value spot, you're either going to jam him or aggressively try to go against him. The more I think about this fight, the more I kind of just want to ignore it. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, all right. Let's just go fight by fight. Um, and let's just get through this. 
We have, um, what's his name? Balaji Oki against Chris Duncan, 8,800 versus 7,400. And, you know, one of the good things about me doing this late is that I've had a chance to absorb content, really, really also think about other, you know, about these fights a little bit. Oki at 8,800 does have a pretty good inside the distance line, you know, at minus 110, you know? And that's really what you need for fighters that are like 9K, 9,100. And when we get to the 9,100, 9,200 hour fighters, you're going to see their, their inside the distance line is about a little, a little higher, but not that much higher. I don't know, minus 150, minus 180 or something like that. So I do think that he's kind of efficiently priced. Okay. I don't consider him being a smash play. I don't consider him being a poor play. He's kind of efficiently priced. Now, I would love to see a little more grappling upside from him, you know, because just having that KO upside, that's kind of rough business. You know, when you, when you play a striker like that, it's it's very, very difficult, you know, mathematically to kind of get there without the, you know, without the, uh, you know, the, the volume and possible wrestling upside to back it up. So I think he's just kind of a play, you know, not great, not bad, you know, whatever. Now, Chris Duncan, I don't know. I, I'm seeing a lot of love for the Chris Duncan side, I think. And I don't know about this. I mean, first of all, his inside the distance line is terrible. The only way that you could justify this is if you were sure that his path to victory were going to be from getting takedowns. And, ah, man, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, you have one fight, a few fights ago, where he did get five takedowns. But even so... Even with five takedowns, he was only able to score 90 points because he doesn't really have that great control time. You know, seven minutes of control time off of five takedowns. It means they really can't hold guys down. And Oki looks like a big dude, you know? So I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't know if I can get to the Chris Duncan here. Now, listen, I'm going to get to him when it comes to 150 max, just, if, you know, because I promise you the Sims are going to get me there. Any kind of takedown upside, especially when you saber Sim, is just going to get, I would say jammed, but really over, uh, over, not overused, but it's going to get used pretty aggressively. Um, so we are going to get there, but I think when you're trying to characterize the best plays and, and who to put as a core and things like that, I don't think Chris Duncan is, is, is really the way to go. Um, okay. So here I'm going to be a little bit biased. Uh, Jacqueline Cavalcante, she, she made my trip, uh, much, very enjoyable. Um, in uh when we went to las vegas not me and her when my my daughter and i went to las vegas a few weeks ago we went to the apex for the fights uh courtesy of i wouldn't say courtesy of DraftKings. you know thanks to DraftKings rewards program that i earned from a zillion dollars with the play last year anyway we went to the apex and we actually met uh jack jacqueline cavalcante we met her 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 friends and family and they were really really nice people and uh my daughter got a picture with her and and we we saw her basically outclass uh Josiah Nunez now again it wasn't a particularly dominant performance and and in fairness Nunez was the aggressor but she couldn't get anywhere on on Cavalcante Cavalcante kept her range she kept her jab going and it wasn't wasn't a particularly close fight as far as I was concerned but it wasn't a particularly high scoring fight so you know you have uh, this is a favorite who honestly is just you know not going to be uh, DFS relevant the the Noel Nora Cornell side is is pretty interesting. Um, she's seventy five hundred, and when I was first looking at this, I was saying, okay, she's going to be irrelevant. Let's just you know, let's 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 x this out. But she's got an inside the distance line that is actually not the worst. You know, you look at her, and it's what is it minus plus three fifty maybe. Ah, it actually depends where you go. So, okay. So maybe it's not that great. So plus 425, that's really not that good. And then I try to invent possible takedown upside, but I don't know. Uh, I don't think that, you know, she's, listen, she's fighting in France. And the, the one of the things that you'll see is that unless, unless there's, I don't know, they, they, they have, all these fighters have big egos and they don't want to go for takedowns unless they have to. And I don't think this is the way it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be a striking battle. I think Cavalcante is going to win. I do think think it's going to end up being just kind of a fade fight. The Cornoli side, if I get to her in, in 150 max, I'm not going to be complaining, but uh, I would not prioritize her either. 
Okay, so we did the Oki fight. We did the Kabakats. We already did the Bares fight. And now we start getting to some of these favorites. Um, uh, Aline Perez at 9,100 against uh, Daria, uh, Daria Z, I'm going to call her, at 7,100. Um, okay. Aline Perez is inside the distance line. I can't imagine being very strong because she doesn't really finish anybody. It's like plus 400. But again, this, 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 this takedown upside is kind of the elephant in the room with a lot of these fighters, like, like six takedowns, two takedowns, whatever, but 10 takedowns. Yikes. You know, uh, I don't, I just don't know, you know, what, what's going, what's going to be with, uh, with Daria Z what's going to be with Daria Z. I don't know. I don't know what her takedown defense looks like. So, ah, uh, if if you get Aline Perez going, and this is 138 points and 12 minutes of, can she really get 12 minutes of control time? Now I'm going to be, I was about to say, I'm going to be a, uh, a racist here and say, you know what? Daria Z has an OVA at the end of her name. So because of that, she's going to probably be a good grappler. <laughs> but you could have said the same thing about Pudilova two fights back. And Perez, okay, she only got two takedowns, but you want to know why she only got two takedowns? Because she turned it into nine minutes of control time. Um, She has a ceiling. It's just the way it is. I mean, she can get 110. She can get 120. There are other fighters that can get 110 and 120 also, but it's a, um, but it's a, uh, I think she's in play. I, I, I think that she's in play. I guess that's the best I can, um, I can say it. Uh, I don't think that Daria is particularly in play at 7,100. I mean, you're going to need to, to, to get in the game in a 14 fight slate. You're, you're, it's not going to be good enough to win as an underdog. You either have to win. Okay. You have to win as a big underdog. Okay. Which opens up salary to get all these big, you know, other big price fighters in or win as an underdog against a very popular favorite. And I don't, and we'll get to them, but I don't see one big, huge favorite standing out over the others. I guess we'll get, I guess Omar Sai, but, and, and, well, obviously the main event, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, maybe in a few minutes. But just being able to win at 7,100 is just not going to be good enough, I don't think. I mean, a 14 fight card. So I do like Perez. Don't like the underdog here. Taylor Lapolis at 9,300. Uh, this is going to, there's going to be a difference between this with respect to who the best plays are and who you might actually play because Taylor Lapolis is going to be very, very low owned. And, and it's going to be for good reason, right? Because you look at his price, he's 93, 9,400, whatever. And his inside the distance line is extremely poor at like plus three, four, 330. Doesn't look to have all that much in the way of, you know, of, of high scoring potential. Look, decision, 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 decision. Like a lot of decisions on his record. So um, now, however, I mean, <laughs> uh, in, in big GPPs, uh, I would never count it out. But uh, well, that, again, that's for another discussion. As far as like who the best plays are, definitely a poor play. Definitely someone that you're going to want to, uh, you know, to X out. Vince Morales on the other side. I mean, I don't know. I've heard some rumors that he could go for takedowns maybe. So if in fact he can get them and win that way, okay, maybe he'll score all right. But Lapalus has not got, he doesn't have bad takedown defense. He's big. I, I, don't, I just don't see this. Well, actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say I don't see it because it's possible. He is going to win the fight. What? What is he? A three to one underdog? 25% of the time? When he wins it, that 25% of the time, he's gonna, is he going to be optimal? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just not not that clear cut. And considering that Laplace is going to be not particularly high owned, you don't get leverage either. So I don't know. I think I'm off of this fight. Um, and then you get to two in a row, which kind of read the same to me. You have two, well, between Ludovic Klein and Umar Asai, you have two enormous favorites um that have really good inside the distance lines. I mean, we'll look at we can look at them together, look at them separately, but I mean Ludovic Klein minus 200 inside. You have him um, first round 
plus like 180. Okay. And then on the other, you know, the other fight, you have Umar Sai, who's very similar. Umar Sai inside minus 160, and him inside the first round, also like plus 160. So they're basically the same play. Um, I, if you're going to separate these, you can see that in, in, in a couple of, of Ludovic Klein's fights, he's gotten multiple takedowns. So maybe you could, you know, uh, give him a little bit more of a bump when it comes to maybe upside, but let's look at Sai too. I mean, Sai, we don't know. I mean, Sai had two takedowns in his debut, so it's possible also. So I think both these fighters are very, very strong. Um, very good inside the distance line. They both have some degree of takedown upside as well. So, um, yeah, uh, both very, very strong underdogs, as uh, favorites. And the, the only thing I would say about the underdogs there is that they're, they're going to be against very popular fighters. Okay. Because they both have, you know, Cy and Klein both have extremely strong, you know, metrics. Um, but they just don't win a lot. You know, they're, they're plus five hundred. You know, to win. So, and and Roberts is plus like seven hundred to win or something. So you just don't get enough wins to to make these worth it. In the even in these fourteen fight cards. All right, now we get to a couple of mid range fights that are you're going to need to to target or at least deal with. Um, and first, you have Ian Kutalaba versus Ivan Urslan, and it's a mid range fight. The, the prices are 8,300, 7,900. And you look at the inside the distance lines for these types of, 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 of prices, you usually need about, you know, plus 200 to be really, really strong plays. And if you look at this, you'll have both of them, like Kutalaba inside is like plus 110, Ursula plus like 120. I mean, these are smash plays. Now I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, this 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 fight could bust. I mean, there could be very sloppy light heavyweight fight with low volume and all that. But you just can't really deny the metrics here. So um, I think both these fighters are very strong. They you know accessing the mid range opens up your lineups to do other things. So I think this is one of the key fights that you have to deal with. And now again, this could fight could bust. It might not be that exciting, but a lot of the time it is. Um, and those times you're going to wish that you had it. So that's why you have to play it. All right. Um, or a decent amount of time. Now, Matt Frivola versus Farah Ziam. All right. Frivola is clearly the side here with respect to DFS. Um, whether he's the side with respect to, you know, betting is for another discussion. Um, I have heard just extremely strong cases made that Ziam is just technically better and, can keep for Verola off him and he can win a very, you know, I say boring, but a very well calculated decision here. But when it comes to DFS, Vervola is the guy you want. I mean, he's much more aggressive, uh, both with the strikes and specifically with the wrestling. Um, you know, Farah Ziam has given up a bunch of takedowns in his recent career, and and Frivola does have a lot of wrestling in his back pocket and and um uh, or even his front pocket. <laughs> so uh at his price, at these prices, you look at him, they're both, again, 83.79 or something like that, 82.8. I mean, you just have to do it. I mean, Frivola is definitely going to be a key part of, of any core, okay? Now, when it comes to Farah um, if this were, say, a 10-fight card, I would say that he is an extremely strong leverage play because Frivola would end up being extremely popular. And then you want to play Ziam, hoping that Frivola just, just, just goes you know, what's the word, balls to the wall and waste all his energy trying to finish or wrestle and Zion just take over and get a first or second round knockout um, at, you know, at very, very low ownership, I believe. Um, but I think 14 fights, I don't think that for Vola is going to be as popular as he could otherwise be. So I don't know. Uh, definitely for Vola. I'm for now going to just say Zion is off the board. Um, okay. Another big time favorite here, Morgan Charrier. 9,500. He looks like the others. You know, he's he's inside the distance line. Is is it's got to be over minus 110, right? I mean, minus 160. I mean, same as these other guys. And, and first rounds, plus 175. So he's essentially the same play as both Klein 
and um, what's his name and Cy, which is going to be higher owned? I honestly, they there really shouldn't be either. Of, any of them should be that higher owned. I guess what you could say is that since they all look exactly the same as far as their metrics go, that you'd have to imagine that Cy would be the most popular just because he's a hundred dollars less than these guys. We're gonna get to Brito in a minute too. Um, but I think it's very little difference between these three as far as ownership, as far as ability to smash, as far as their likelihood to smash, uh, the possibility for takedown upside and all of that stuff. Um, so really pick the pick the one that fit best fits your lineup and and they're all really, really good. Uh, okay. The thing about Miranda is that if in fact he does pull this off, it's almost certainly going to be a combination of takedowns and a sub. So unlike some of those other uh, big underdogs, his, he actually has a path that scores really well. Um, and, but Sherry, is he going to be that popular where you want to, you know, search for that leverage? Well, if you get to that leverage, organically meaning when you run your stuff and run your sims which we'll get to tomorrow i guess fine but i don't think you need to prioritize that brian battle versus kevin jusset um okay uh, you, you got it it's it, when we did the uh the college tours back when my kids were younger the idea was you want to try to make you know a a a, a big cool uh excuse me big, a big school small and a small school big so to make a big small a big school small, it's like making a big slate small. So you're gonna have to make some decisions. And in a small slate, you could talk forever about not forever. You could tell, talk a good while about this battle fight. Battle could be aggressive, more aggressive than Juset, but Juset's the underdog, and Juset actually is a pressure fighter, and Battle actually fights off his back a little bit. So. I think at the end of the day, this is just one of those that you're just going to have to ignore. Um, now, again, if you get to it with your Sims and whatever, that's fine. But, I mean, battle inside the distance, plus 270 at his price is no good. Jusset, I mean, he he could, you know, listen, he had volume in his last fight. That could be worth something. But as far as, and he did have a takedown and sub in his fight before that, so that could be something. But, again, the fight, the, the, the card is just too big. You know, and you have to like make some stands and whatever somewhere. So I think when you're hand building, I think this I think this fight's just going to have to disappear. Um, and now the last of the big favorites, except for the main event, you have Joe. Han well, we'll get to uh, Imovov in a second. You have Joe Anderson Brito against William Gomez, and you have you know Brito at minus three hundred with I imagine a very similar inside the distance line as all these other cats we talked about. Yeah, I mean. Well, it's a little worse. I mean, he's plus minus 110. So I guess he's going to be a little less likely to finish. But he's still going to get like an incredible amount of ownership because number one, his price is lower. And number two, you just look at this this game log. I mean, this is like two TKO, two TKO, sub two TKO, one sub one, sub one. You know what I mean? Like this is... Everything's over 100 here. The one thing I will say, though, is that he is kind of low volume. But is he low volume just because his opponents won't let him get off any volume? This fight here is a little bit concerning. Um, this Bill Algio fight. Now, again, it was two years ago. But still, I mean, Bill Algio is old, eh, older, I guess. He got really kind of worked by him when you think about it. And and boy, oh, boy, that's 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 not great. Weston Wilson first round. Uh, I, I can. This Jonathan Pierce fight was 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 a war. You know the fact that he was able to withstand the Jonathan Pierce pressure and get to him in a sub, but then you look at it. He's like one takedown, eight significant strikes. I mean, I don't know if he's like going to be that popular. Maybe end up not prioritizing him. I guess. And then you have William Gomez, who um, you know. I think this game log speaks everything. Um, well, not everything. Right? He's low scoring, intelligent fighter, you know, gets his, gets his, gets the job done. He's in France. He probably has some decision equity, meaning that if he gets the decision, he's likely to win. 
I mean, he did have three takedowns against Aaron's and eight minutes of control time. I mean, th th this, honestly, and we'll talk about this in the big GPP stuff. If you really want to win all the money, okay, you'll play William Gomez. Now, you'll lose like a lot, okay? Not to mention, because first of all, you're only going to win the fight 25% of the time. And even when you win, you're probably not going to be optimal more than 10% of the time. But he's going to be like 5% of, I think. Um, and not only that, but he's going to be uh, fighting Brito, who's going to get all kinds of ownership. Um, this probably shouldn't have been discussed in, in this, this video, because he's definitely not one of the best plays. As a matter of fact, he might be one of the worst. However, uh, I, I just see this. I see Brito going for it and being low volume. And next thing you know, Gomez gets takedowns. And then you get like Gomez by sub or something like that. Man, that would be so brutal. Um, that would like knock out this entire GPP. And well, it's not till the end of the card, so nobody would, would realize it, but uh, it's, uh, wow, this is nuts. All right, forget that. All right. Brito looks like a good play. Uh, Gomez, again, is really for for psychos only. I'm definitely going to have some of this. Anyway, uh, moving on, uh, Nasruddin Imovov versus Brandon Allen. So you have Imovov at 8,900, and his metrics are significantly worse than a lot of the guys we've already talked about. Like his... Inside the distance line at plus 140 or so, I mean, he's worse than, I mean, even though he's he's more expensive, 8,900 and these other guys, I mean, he's, like, look at Oki again. Like, Oki at 100 less, I think. What was his? He was, like, plus 110, right? Minus 110 even. So, Imavov is, is um, his inside the distance line is pretty poor. But I, I think that at the end of the day, Brendan Allen is going to be a popular underdog. And I think there's, I mean, there's a decent reason for that. I mean, you look at, you look at Brendan Allen and he's done nothing but win. Okay. In the past, whatever, two years, three years, nothing but win, right? One, two, three, four. I mean, this winning is Andrew Muniz was sick. Okay. First round against Jotko, he he won beat Malkun in decision. Are you kidding me? I mean, this guy's on a total roll here. Uh, and I when I first looked at it, and I still think this. I think brand. I think this line is ridiculous. Okay, but that's not for DFS. Um, you have to, as gross as it is, kind of have to presume that these lines are accurate. But the hell if I'm not going to just play some Brandon Allen here. You know what I mean? He's a good fighter. He's he could mix it up. He could get takedowns and all this. So I, I worry that he's going to be too popular. But if that's the case, then you could get Imavov in play here. As a matter of fact, like if you want to, you know, go overweight on this fight in general, maybe that's not bad. Maybe you play Imavov as well, just because everybody will see what I see and Brendan Allen will be that popular. But uh, there's no disputing. Well, I, there is disputing because people are disputing it. Like Brendan Allen at 7,300 with with upside. So uh, I definitely like him as an underdog here. Uh, Imavov is just not going to be one of my favorite favorites. And then this main event, I mean, it's the only reason to ever, to, to, to that you're going to want to fade this is because it's 14 fights. Um, and that's, you know, that could be a good reason. But I mean, this fight has just got to deliver, right? I mean, no matter who wins, because... If Santini wins, I'm look, just look at these scores. <laughs> this is these are all one round and two rounds. I mean, God forbid he could actually, you know, drag this out over five rounds. I mean, it's nothing but it's nothing but 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 pain for people who fade him. I mean, it's going to be look at this 150, 115, 135, one pass. I mean, this is ridiculous. Okay, so. Uh, you just have to play this. On the other hand, I mean, I presume Santini is going to be the most popular fighter on the slate at what, 40%, something like that? I'm just guessing. And if in fact, 
Moicano wins somehow, I mean, he's going to knock out just a ton of lineups. Um, so his, you know, doesn't, I shouldn't say he doesn't quite have the upside. I mean, he can get this going. I don't know how he's actually going to get takedowns in this situation, but he could get some subs, you know, if, if, if Santini gets a little sloppy. And if you get Malikano, it doesn't matter what round you get him in. You know, you get him at 90 points or something like that. Remember, you're getting him at 90 and getting rid of all the Santini lineups immediately. Uh, so I definitely think that this fight is one you have to key. In in big, you know, portfolios, yeah, you don't have to go all in, but there's just no disputing the the upside here. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to do, uh, hopefully going to do a betting breakdown a little bit later today. And then we're also going to do a, um, a lineup construction video, hopefully tomorrow morning. Uh, maybe later tonight. We shall see how the personal variance plays out. That will do it, everybody. Good luck.